Hiya, it's Fred Crowell back on the George. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of how we're uh, progressing on this side of the hull, putting in uh, fillers towards the final preparation for painting. Um, we might have to be a little bit quick because if you if you take a look behind you, the well, location of the slipway is right on the river and in about another hour there's going to be some water where I'm standing. We'll just do a quick one on this side. Now, when you're putting filler in, the important thing is to get a filler consistency that is very close to the same consistency of the wood. If you have a filler that is too hard, you have a great deal of difficulty sanding it away and you finish up taking more of the wood away and you finish up with big crown bumps and blisters that are very difficult to get a finish. So you experiment with various fillers till you get a one the right consistency or as close as to the wood that you're sanding. Then you get a good quality finish. The stuff I'm using is called Free Fix. This is from a local stockist, East Coast Fiberglass Supplies, a company that supply me with most of my GRP. Very good, good company, good price, good service, which is unusual these days. But never mind, this is how we'll progress. The easiest way is to just cut a piece of wood like an old fashioned butter bat so you can get a good hold, finger under the bottom for a bit of support. Now this one, I'm just gonna mix a very small bit because I say we're gonna be fighting the tide. Another trick of this trade is never mix too much because with it being a, a two pack, if it starts to go off before you finish using it, it goes in the bin, you can't use it. So you just do a very small bit, I'll just pop that back on there. Always try to keep your lid on if you can as long as possible because the vapours start to dry out of the product and it makes it drier so it's harder to put on. So we'll just do a very quick mix on this. It doesn't take a lot. but. It will go on the job. Now the problem with this boat is there's an awful lot of nails on and it took about a week to sand and fill the other side of the boat, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Right, so we'll just get a, a wee bit on the knife. Now all the seams have got to be filled and all the nail holes have got to be filled. So if you try to put See, I'll try and go backwards a little bit so you can see better. But if you fill the seams in first, press it right in, press it right in. Secret is to get as much in as you can and then scrape off. Then you do the nail holes around it. Press and press. If possible, take off as much as you can of the surplus. You don't want to leave big lumps on because the more you leave on, the more you've got to sand off. So you try to make a job a bit easier for you if you can. Get these into here. But this is quite nice stuff. It's blue at the minute, but once the hardener starts working on it, it goes like a grey colour. But what you try to do is plan your, plan your day out with your filler. The longer it's dried before you sand it, the better it is and the easier it is. So you try to like make sure you've got enough filler done one day so you can come in the next day and it's hard. So then you would start your day off by doing an hour's filling and then you go onto the sanding and then you move on to your, your next bay that you've done the night before and that's all ready to sand off. Once it's dried off, it goes this darker colour. And then what we do now is we get a, a sander on. This one has a vacuum on it so it's not too bad. But I'll, if I'm working all day, I will have the mask on with the filter 
but just for this little demo, I'll not bother. <laughs> the grey this is actually a flash coat that we put on that's purely as a guideline for when you're sanding now we've got these holes filled in we'll go over again and we'll check just to see if it needs another bit more filler in then it would have a second sand now you can see there's high points and low parts on here the low parts if you get them really bad will virtually sand all of that paint off but any parts that are low, stay with paint on them, and that's a good guideline for you for where you need to get your fillers. So that would be the whole board will be filled, sanded, sanded right down. A second filler will go on. The whole board will be sanded again with another flash coat. Then that will be sanded off just by hand. And then there's two primer coats going on and then about four undercoats to go on. When you were in the last time, we were busy progressing with the planking on the other side. We haven't yet turned it over, but we have got the other side complete. So if you want to go around now, we'll have a look at a completed side of the boat. On the starboard side, this is the side that's the high side because the boat is still tilted over. And this has now had a couple of coats of primer and an undercoat on the top. The first undercoat fixes on. But we've got a nice finish on here, we can't see any of the nails. There might be a few tiny little blemishes that we can't get rid of, but we don't want to take another eighth of an inch off the whole hull, so it's looking very very good compared to what it was what procedure now is we get these sanding pads and everything's just gonna have a nice light rub over we'll give that a nice rub over between coats and just give it get rid of the dust So that's prep nice. Feel it better without the gloves on, but you can still feel it a bit. But that's looking very, very good now. So we've now reached a stage on this side. We have fittings and fixtures that have to go on and rails, but you need to have a good coat of paint on the hull before you put your other materials on because it'll never get a chance of another coat of paint behind it. We have already some fittings which are quite important. We've got a few scuppers to go in here. We've all had several visitors in who uh, the knowledge of boats is not very great and they keep asking is this where the oars used to go on the old boats but they're not it's not a rowboat. What we have here is this is called a scupper door as we mentioned earlier with it being an, an open boat if it took a big wave inside, it would fill up with water and it needs to expel the water off the deck. So these have to fit in here, like so. That would be fit right back to the hull. If the water comes from the outside, the door tips open and lets the water out. But if we have a wave comes and hits it, it pushes against the door and it can't get any water in. So it's a one action thing with that coming up. But there'll be a coat of gloss goes around that before they go on. So we've got, they've got a supplier who's given some more of them and we'll get them back. We've had to get new ones of these made because I think they only had a couple left. It had aluminium plates on when it first came in. I think it was a case of uh, 
one of the previous owners, fisherman, etc., must have thought, oh, brass, shiny. If I take that off and take it to this local scrapyard, I'm sure I can get a couple of extra pints of beer. <laughs> so this is how they disappear. All these big rails to go around here. They are quite a big job to do. There's a lot of steaming on that. Uh, once that lot's done, then we'll be moving forward to some final paint colours on, which will be a bit of a, an achievement to get a final coat on. If you uh, look back at some of the early videos, uh, it was a bit sad when it came in, but we're looking very good now. So we're quite happy with that, and the uh, people that are getting the boat have came in and had a look, and some of them were quite emotional and had managed to transfer it to what it was. But this is what we're here for, and it will be a lovely job when it goes back. Mm -hmm.